good morning from right out front of Manhattan Beach. We got a walk day and we're gonna pull up the anchor and get on the move as we head south to Annapolis. I think it's supposed to be like six foot in the ocean today, so hopefully that's wrong and it's way calmer, but we're going for it anyways. chunks are way less painful. I wish I didn't know that, but I do. So now you do too. Now that you have that lovely image in your head, now is the perfect time to tell you about today's video sponsor. Element is an electrolyte drink mix that helps anyone stay hydrated without the sugar and other dodgy ingredients found in other sports drinks. We drink Element to hydrate during and after our workouts. We also like to have it on the ready for days like this where we're sailing offshore and seasickness and dehydration are far more likely for us. Element can help prevent and eliminate headaches, muscle cramps, fatigue, sleeplessness, and other common symptoms of electrolyte deficiencies, all of which we want to avoid at all costs when sailing offshore. Element has no sugars, no no coloring, no artificial ingredients, no gluten, no fillers, and no BS. Now, Element is offering you a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serving packets free with any Element order, which is a great way to try out all eight flavors. You can get yours at drinkelement.com slash Tula. That's D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash Tula. Thank you guys so much for watching and cross your fingers, it's calm for us. Okay, what are our forecasted Conditions. So we're just heading out of, I think it's called Breezy Point Inlet right now. This is Breezy Point. This is all like the Rockaways over here, which I've never been here before. I've surfed in Long Beach a bunch, but never out to the Rockaways. Apparently they get some good surf. Anyway, this morning supposed to be incredible surf, like five foot light offshore winds. I meant sailing conditions. I know. So we should have dead downwind sailing conditions, hopefully around 15 knots and kind of lightening up throughout the day. But we're supposed to have a six foot swell, five to six foot swell at like a nine second interval. So not the longest, which would make it more comfortable, but not the shortest either, which would make it more uncomfortable. So I think it's gonna be all right. I think with this light wind and a nine uh, second period swell, I think it'll be not too bad. We got a little bit of a late start this morning, so I have a feeling we're just gonna be coming into Barnegat as long as the inlet looks safe to transit. We learned on our way up here the, the correct route to go into the inlet and out of the inlet. So we'll probably do some research on the way and see if we can get in there. Otherwise, it's to Atlantic City and we'll just pull in after dark. That's a big safe inlet. Or we just stay offshore overnight. Head straight to Cape May, so we'll see. You know what I just realized? What? Every single mile we travel, it's just closer and closer to the Bahamas. <laughs> We're heading to the warm, the blue water.
That's good, not anymore. So we have New Jersey shoreline right there and we are going, we're trying to go right along the shoreline and the wind is right along the shoreline. So we are sailing as close to dead down wind, not as possible, but as we want to. So we're dead down wind is 180 degrees. We're sailing at 175 degrees to the true wind. Just about dead down wind. A few different ways we could be doing that. One is to just have the main down and just fully be flying the spinnaker and that'd be fine but I wanted to see if we could leave the main up and just maximize the sail area we have up so we do have full main up right now and the spinnaker it's an asymmetric spinnaker so normally we'd be flying it with a tack the front corner of the spinnaker is right off the bowsprit there but I kind of pulled it out and now we're flying the tack off the windward hull so that way when the wind is coming from behind us, it can hit the mainsail, and we're pulling the spinnaker out this way, away from the shadow of the mainsail, as far as we can, to try to uh, keep it full, and keep it full of wind, and just keep moving as deep downwind as we can. So far, it's working really well, especially with this swell that we have. Again, not a huge swell. I'm really happy with it. We're angling, we're kind of like towards the shore slightly, away from the shore slightly, so hopefully our average is side shore. Otherwise, we might have to jibe jibe it's like just 10 degrees that way and that'd be just fine but we'll just wait till we get a little bit closer see what the wind does wind might shift a little and pull us away from shore a little so we'll see so here's the tack of the sail here's the normal tack line this is normally right above the bowsprit there but what we did was tied on another tack line and ran it through this like low friction snatch block all the way back to a winch pulled the tack over now this we're, we're on this big heavy duty fleet but it's kind of far back so the line is getting pulled up against this stanchion structure and i don't want there to be pressure on there so we rigged this other little barber hauler thing to kind of pull the original tack line down to take away that upward force on the stanchion so it might be touching just a little bit but there's no force on it whatsoever it's working pretty good so far gonna make a little lunch took a little nap Sierra's on watch and now it's Sierra's turn to rest wind is really starting to lighten up we're only going like three and a half knots boat speed eight nine knots of wind and we're going dead downwind with it so real hard to keep the speed up so if it gets any lighter or more uncomfortable we're just gonna pull the spinnaker down and motor probably be motoring for the rest of the day. Got a good amount of sailing in though. It's starting to collapse and back and forth, especially when we have swell and again, this light of wind. So not really great for the sail to be doing that all the time. So, and if it's not helping us too much, we'll just take it down. So we'll see. about to go down and all the colors are just so pretty. How's it going? Good. Had to turn the motor on. Wind completely died. It's glassy out here except for a little bit of swell. So I learned something interesting. We have gory. I've heard of people mentioning the overdrive saying the props have overdrive function and I didn't fully understand it so I kind of wrote it off until I researched it and I figured out what they were talking about. Our, our props fold and when they fold to the reverse position they have a steeper pitch than in the forward position and if you go from reverse quickly to forward then you're at this higher pitch and you can get 
a lot more thrust out of a lower RPM or out of the same RPM than you would if they were feathered in the normal forward position. And as long as you don't need to like be powering through with high revs in like nasty conditions and stuff, it can be really efficient. And sure enough, like I've used it for a bit and all day today, we're on one engine doing six and a half knots at like 2,500 RPMs, uh, a little less, 2,400 RPMs. Really efficient, like we're going whole speed or what I kind of call whole, whole speed on this boat on one engine, like easily. As you can see, we're in Atlantic City, tied up at the Golden Nugget here. It's a big, it's like a state marina, but it's part of the Golden Nugget. But we're just at the fuel dock trying to get fuel because we're pretty low. And this is really one one of the main reasons we stopped here. Otherwise, it probably would have just went overnight last night. But it's like 7.45 and these are supposed to be self-serve fuel stations, but they're not working. So no one's here at the dock right now. So we're just waiting for either there's someone to come or there's another fuel dock on the other side and they open at eight. So right at eight, I'm gonna call them and make sure it's deep enough for us to get over there and get some fuel. We woke up early, we we're trying to get a, a early start, but not looking that way. And now we're gonna be fighting the current getting out of the inlet, but that's all right. Get to Cape May today. Yeah, I'll probably go around Cape May and anchor on the inside off of Cape May on the Delaware Bay to tick off a few miles and then um, continue up the Delaware Bay. out of Atlantic City Inlet or Absecon Inlet, whatever they call it. Conditions look beautiful. Maybe side offshore winds. It's well looked like it definitely died down a bit. We got this monster dredge and two tugs right in front of us, just motoring out in front of us. So we have to give them some room right now. Ooh. absolutely perfect sailing conditions. We're just cruising downwind, five to six knots boat speed. Swell laid down, so it's like maybe a three foot long period swell. Sun's out. I just saw a whale go by. I wasn't quick enough to grab the camera. It was either a right whale or a humpback whale, something like that. I'm not a marine biologist, so I don't, couldn't tell you. I don't know if it was divine intervention or the kinship of all living things, but I tell you, Jerry, at that moment, I was a marine biologist. Wind is starting to shift from side shore to a little more onshore, so side onshore. So we're gonna jibe, because it's kind of, we're sailing as deep as we can, but we're going too much into the shore. So we'll jibe and we'll keep going along the shore straight towards Cape May.
when we first got this boat, we were having trouble jibing this finnaker. I don't know, I, I don't know what step was off, but we switched roles, and now Sierra's pulling in the sheet, and I'm letting go the old sheet. Does that mean I pull in faster than you? Yeah, maybe. We had some good practice trying to jive with the Corsair 880. I think that really gave us some good experience, but we were missing a step or we were off on our timing. So we were having a little bit of trouble, but now we're back on and we can jive this finnaker over pretty good. Um, all right, we gotta get the main sail traveler down to the other side. And I will... So the first time I've ever been to Cape May was back in like, I don't know, 2010, 9, 10, something like that. For those of you guys who've been watching for a long time know that I was an ocean lifeguard for 13 summers on Fire Island on Long Island. Our organization was relatively small compared to other lifeguard organizations around the country. And we were just getting into doing lifeguard tournaments and you can compete against other lifeguard organizations like doing like swimming and paddling and running events, rescue events. One year they had the lifeguard nationals down here in Cape May. We carpooled with all our guys who we lifeguarded with who did the tournaments and we came down here for a long weekend to do the nationals. It was so cool seeing like some of these big lifeguard organizations like from Los Angeles and these right lifeguard here. organizations in New Jersey. What? Dolphin. I'm telling them about the first time I have ever been to Cape May for a lifeguard tournament. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world because you see these big lifeguard orga organizations and they have these dory rowboats and surf skis which are like long racing kayaks. They were so good at everything like the rescue events, the swimming events and then my favorite which is like the board and, and watercraft stuff. So it was so cool to just see that and be around it, be introduced to it. I got a surf ski shortly after that so I had some fun with that for a few years. I always did the paddle board events like the prone rescue board events and the distance running events. So right on this beach right here it was like a two mile run. So every time we come through Cape May I think of the first time I was ever here during that that whole event which is really really neat wind completely died so we had to turn the engine on unfortunately so the current rips here we're going to the Delaware Bay right now from the Atlantic Ocean and the current rips in and out of here and right now we're on the tail end of the outgoing current so we're going against the current which is not good and not something we try to do but it's the tail end of it and it's not that strong probably a knot right now as we go up the Delaware Bay we're going to time the current so that we have it with us and then with us through the chest the CND canal and then over into the Chesapeake Bay. There's a canal that goes through Cape May as well. Sometimes we pull into Cape May and we anchor there and you get in on the ocean side. And there's a canal that comes out on the Delaware Bay side. But on this boat with our mast, we can't get under. It's either power lines or a bridge or something. So we can't go through that canal. There's the channels of the Cape May Canal right there where the ferry comes in and out of and it goes over to Lewis, Delaware and boats with shorter heights can get through all the way. We're just gonna anchor in the lee right here along this beach. Drop the hook right now. Egg sandwich, two eggs. We are on the Delaware Bay right now, and it is as calm as calm can be. We only have one knot of true wind, so obviously no sails up. We're just motoring along on one engine. So this bay leads all the way up to, well, it connects with the Delaware River, and that leads all the way up to Philadelphia. So there's a lot of commercial traffic that transit this bay and river to get up to Philadelphia. Ships and tug and barge, a bunch of that kind of stuff. Um, we've seen a few. There's one right over there right now. So we might not have any wind, but we timed it this morning, so we have some good current with us. We have about a knot of current right now. Probably gonna pick up a little bit more. We'll have that our ent entire transit up the bay, which is nice, give us a little bit of a push. And we're taking the Delaware Bay. We're gonna go to the C&D Canal, or the Chesapeake and Delaware Canal, and that connects the Chesapeake Bay with the Delaware Bay. 
really cool long skinny canal again commercial traffic transits it along with a ton of recreational vessels we actually just got word from our friends that the canal was closed yesterday and this morning because they're trying to get like a sunken sailboat out of it or something like that so hopefully they do that pretty quick like that canal can't be closed for too long a lot of boats need to use it so hopefully by the time we get there it's open otherwise there's a spot we can anchor before we enter the canal and we'll just spend the night there and hopefully it's open tomorrow check this out I've, I've known it for a while, but I read an article popped up the other day about how this year the government put up more lighthouses than ever before on the government auctions, and you can buy them from, like, they give away a whole bunch for, like, nonprofits and educational, but then they also auction off a bunch for you to actually own. How cool would it be to own that and, like, rent it out as an Airbnb, like, the experience of living in a lighthouse, you know? I saw one that was going for, like, $80,000 but there wasn't like living quarters it was literally just the lighthouse and then some of them it's the lighthouse with the lighthouse keepers like quarters and then more quarters so it's like a whole like kind of lighthouse plantation and those were going for like a couple million but how cool the bay is super calm right now doesn't mean it's always like this in fact this bay generally speaking is pretty shallow and because the current flows so strongly through it, it can really get nasty in here. Just really short, steep, choppy seas. And honestly, one of our roughest times we've ever had was in this bay, getting towards Cape May. We were in our old trawler Neverland, our little 34 foot marine trader trawler. And we were taking waves over the bow, like completely stuffing the bow through these short, choppy waves. They were only about, I don't know, maybe five foot, four or five foot, but they were so close together that as soon as we came off one, we were just stuffing it right into the next one. Just water completely over the bow. That was pretty wild to experience, a little bit scary. It can certainly get rough in here when the wind is opposing the current. So we got about 30 miles to go till the entrance of the CND Canal. And I think it's gonna be just like this the whole entire way. Battery box up front. So obviously the canal is back open again. They must have gotten that sunken sailboat out. We were able to enter no problem. And you can see the canal is pretty skinny, especially for having big ships and barges come through here. And that's something we have to watch out for. If there is a big ship or barge coming, passing us that way or even with us, we have to make sure that because we are much more maneuverable and a smaller boat and a pleasure boat, we have to move over to the side and give them plenty of room to pass. It's like 10 or 15 miles where it comes out to the Chesapeake Bay. Because it's so narrow and there's big ships and barges that come through here, they have the right of way because they're restricted in their ability to maneuver. So we do see a big ship or a barge or tug or whatever, a big commercial vessel coming through. We have to give them plenty of room. We just got to kind of pull over to the side as close as we can without putting our boat at risk of running aground or running into the rocks or whatever. And it's like 10 or 15 miles to the other side uh, where it comes out into the Chesapeake Bay. But we're probably gonna stop in Chesapeake City up here. I've never stopped here before, I don't think, but there's some restaurants and I think a free dock and stuff like that. So we'll probably pull up to the free dock, grab a bite to eat at one of the restaurants and check it out. Although I'm kind of tempted to keep going because we're gonna have the current with us in the canal our entire way if we keep going and even as we come out into the Chesapeake Bay. So we could motor into the evening tonight and have the current the whole way. Whereas if we go tomorrow, we'll lose the current in the Chesapeake Bay at a certain point. So the only other thing we really have to worry about and we had to check before we, we go through the CND Canal or any inland waterways is bridge heights. We are 62, 63 feet tall. I think 62 feet plus the uh, little whip antenna. So anything over that, we're clear. And on the CND Canal, they're all over that except for one bridge when it's closed, which is this bridge right here. So this bridge we're about to go under is a railroad bridge. When it's closed, it's only 45 feet tall, but when it's open, which it normally is open, it's like 100 feet or over 100 feet. So we're clear and we got a barge coming, so we got to move over to the side of the channel right now.
So all this fun stuff is happening right in the same place. Fully passed under the railroad bridge, no problem. It is closed when the train is going by or right before, right after it's going by, but normally it's open. We got this barge coming this way. And then we were hearing a pan pan call on the VHF. So a pan pan call for those of you guys who don't know, hold on. So on VHF, there's like three like warning. There's security or some people say security, like a caution call that happens a lot when like a big ship is like entering say the CND canal or like a harbor, they'll do a security warning. They'll just let everyone on the radio know that they're coming in, hey, watch out for us, whatever. That's like not an emergency, just heads up. And then a pan pan is like kind of not quite an emergency. Uh, someone's in distress in a way. The last one is mayday. Obviously mayday is when a vessel is at risk or a life is at risk and that's like the an emergency like need to be rescued losing your boat or someone is gonna die um, at risk of dying that's basically a mayday call but take a step back pan pan is not quite to that level so there is some sort of situation going on not at risk necessarily of losing a boat or uh, losing a life so that's pan pan so we're hearing this pan pan call they said we are a uh, center console vessel adrift in the cnd canal and they were putting out this pan pan call because in, again in the cnd canal we have all this commercial traffic. So they were just giving that everyone a heads up. Hey, we're kind of in distress. Our engine's not working right now. And we're just adrift. And they didn't want like a commercial ship to hit them or something because the ship can't maneuver out of the way or can't slow down. They need to keep going forward to have steerage. So we're hearing this pan pan call. And sure enough, that was the boat that was putting out the pan pan call. They had someone on their way to give them a tow. And I don't know if that was the, the person who was on their way to give them a tow or if it was just someone along the way who decided they would help out and give them a tow. Pretty exciting stuff. Where are we? We're, we just got to Chesapeake City. We still have plenty of daylight. Could probably keep going, but we've never been here before. It seems like a cool stop, so. Uh, I think I remember you going up to that dock in the pouring rain and walking jetty. Oh, yeah. I remember that. <laughs> and I was on the boat, I think. And I kept moving? Yeah, I think so. I, like, caught back up to you on the whaler, and you were on the trawler. Yeah. So there is a free dock that you can tie up to for, I think, overnight but there's only room for two to three boats two to three boats are already there so we will be anchoring okay we did a quick stop in chesapeake city last night we woke up super early this morning 5 30 to get on the way because that's when we had the crowd with us but it is so foggy out right now and you really can't see anything this is when we are praising the lore that we have ais still don't have radar but ais is huge because at least we can see any big ship coming towards us and there are a few how you dealing in these no sea conditions good just keeping a lookout and AIS, we got our VHF on, lights are on. It should, the fog should lift soon. Like you can feel the sun, it's getting stronger. It should be burning off. Like. All right, people made it we're officially in the chesapeake bay fog burned off and it's clear as can be sunny warm we can see the chesapeake bay bridge i believe it's called right we're in front of us taking full advantage of the warm sun <laughs> ah, pretty beautiful weather for october are you excited to be in annapolis almost again, again. so the last time we were here was in january when we built the Tallulah Canoe with Chesapeake Lightcraft. So we'll probably meet up with Chesapeake Lightcraft. We'll see those guys while we're here. For those of you guys, some of you guys have been asking where the Tallulah Canoe is, and right now it's stored at Sierra's parents' house in Florida. So hopefully we can get some use out of it when we're back down there. Are we gonna do the Everglades Challenge again if we're back in time? <laughs> no? I might. I need a new thing. I can't redo things. We got like 20 miles to go. You made it! You made it! 
to Annapolis again. We have arrived. Thank goodness. We had such good weather. Yeah, it was a little rainy. Yeah, it was a little foggy, but it was calm in the ocean. And that is all I care about. All I have to say is my goals of my existence are to be able to dock as good as Billy. How on earth does he do that? I was stressed just being on the boat let alone being the one driving the boat as we were going in between all these fancy cats in between all these pilings where you can't see the other side he is so good at this how does it feel to be one of the most skilled dockers in existence mm. i like to do things really well that was not a disaster but i would not call it really well are you so. kidding i thought that was perfect the boat touched the piling that's not not good, no good. Oh my gosh, you touched a piling when you had no room to even go forward. I mean, it's a really big slip. A big slip, but you had to get in it with no room going forward. Yeah, no. If you touch a piling with someone holding a fender there, because you gave them enough warning and time, that's acceptable, but I, I didn't do that, so. I just didn't have enough time. No, it wasn't your fault. Me. I didn't anticipate it, so. I give myself like a C minus. I gave you an A triple plus. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? It does feel so good. Like this, just getting here. We're here for the Annapolis Boat Show. We wanted to be at the Annapolis Boat Show to see all of you guys. And we needed to get the boat here because the boat is in the show as well. It's kind of a stress on us, just making sure we got here in time, making sure break anything or just, just having a schedule then in, in and of itself is stressful enough. So like this was a big thing on the schedule that we could not miss. We had to be here in time and we're finally here. I think a lot of the stress is out of our hands and hopefully moving forward we really don't have much on the schedule after the boat show we're gonna get a bunch of warranty stuff fixed on the boat and then we are going to sail south to Florida and then to the Bahamas kind of at our leisure in a way like the only the only thing on our schedule is to meet up with family during holidays and that's it we had so much fun at the boat show and we want to thank everyone that came out and braved the cold and the rain to say hi to us. We loved hearing about your dreams, past adventures, and hearing that so many of you are setting out on your own endless summer. We got to put so many faces to names and catch up with old and new friends. Thanks for being on this wild ride with us. We couldn't do it without you.